1960s, they started to build some facilities by decision of the Soviet government capable to protect important control centers against nuclear weapons. At the beginning of the 50s, a decision was made to build in Moscow under Taganskaya Square a protected command post for handling of air defense troops and for telegraphic and telephone communications of Ministry of Defense. Local inhabitants residing in the 50s in this district hardly suspected that a secret underground facility was being constructed beneath the ground. And even today only few people know what is hidden behind the walls of Building 11 of the 5th Katelnicheski Lane. In the 20s an ordinary dwelling house was built here. It was exactly this building which was defined as a central entrance to the protected command post. In 1956, the special object was commissioned. Endless tunnels and passages stretched out under the dwelling houses at the depth of 60 meters. Two and a half thousand military and civil specialists worked at the facility when it was commissioned. Its staff could work in an autonomous mode for 90 days. All types of vital activity at the object were guaranteed by independent ventilation, water and power supply and provisioning. At the end of the 70s, a necessity arose to carry out the reconstruction of the object and replace the obsolete equipment by new more up-to-date. Repair work began in 1985. The object was subject to complete dismantling. Equipment, facing material, which covered the concrete walls, furniture, everything was taken away. Work at the object went on to 1990, and then funding was cut off. The powerful bunker that could withstand a nuclear strike had to live through much more difficult peaceful time. Once rather mighty, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics lived out its last days. The political course taken by Mikhail Gorbachev, President of the USSR, was directed to disarmament and termination of Cold War. On the whole, it was gracious work. But what we got in end became our national tragedy and shame. The Americans stipulated at the first clause of nuclear disarmament talks that we had to destroy our SS-18 missiles and remove the complexes from high alert. Gorbachev promptly agreed to. Neither Elson had any objections. One by one, the missile complexes were turned into metal scrap. Many special underground objects had the same fate it would become one of the biggest victories of the American people in the Cold War. Hereinafter, after, the reconstruction of object number 42 had been carried out at the expense of the Central Telegraph Company up to 1995. Then, having assessed its financial resources and evaluated the state of object, the main telegraph office came to the conclusion that it was not reasonable to use this object for its direct purpose. The work was cut down and only object security was ensured. In 2006, the object was put up for an auction and sold. But the underground town did not surrender. As a loyal soldier who gave an oath to his motherland, it is still being on its operational duty, but in another quality. Today, special object number 42 is an exposition and entertainment center protected command post Tadansky. Dozens of people go down daily at the depth of 60 meters to witness the nuclear confrontation of two powers of the distant past. Now, the potential situation in the world is again far from being stable. Global terrorism, local wars, only intensify the arms race which involves new countries. We would like to hope that such underground facilities would be never used for their direct purpose and serve only as monuments to mankind madness.